Hey guys, this is Melody, the massage therapist, and I'm gonna show you how to make a mask. It's a mask, a surgical mask that goes over the N95 um, medical mask. So it's only 50% effective as far as keeping germs out, but I wanted to show you how I make it. Rosie told me I needed to make a video, even though there's a gazillion out there already. So this is for you, Rosie. And at the end, I'm gonna show you some um, shortcuts that I do to help with my uh, shortcuts on cutting and how to cut the lace quickly. Well, this is, this is actually lingerie lace because I couldn't find elastic. So it takes quarter inch elastic. If you can't find elastic, you can use lingerie elastic or you take hair ties, cut them in half or cut them. And I actually found hair ties on my doorknobs from like years ago. So you can take hair ties for the ear, piece, ear pieces or the lingerie, lay, uh, lingerie elastic and you have a six by nine square or six by nine rectangular two pieces. You have a cute piece and I just, there was an old sheet that was donated to So Sweet Angel Gowns. It's so interesting. So Sweet Angel Gowns started um, a couple of years ago making bereavement gowns for babies and they've had all these seamstresses in place uh, seamstress is working with them and now they're all making surgical masks for the um, COVID-19. So you have your six by nine piece of, two pieces of material and you do it about a quarter inch away from the side. I just use my flipper uh, as the edge and you're going to leave a gap so these are the, the right sides are together. So you're gonna sew. Oops, can I go back? And then you place your elastic. Flip it up, you only flip it up when the needle is down. And you go like this. It's kind of wonky, but it works. And, and you pivot around the corner. And I pull the elastic away so I don't get it caught in there. And then flip it up again and you grab the other half and make sure it's flat. And you bring it to the corner. And you pivot again and you go all the way down this other side because you don't you only have to have one side open and my actual piece of other piece of material is kind of bigger so it isn't the exact same size as the white piece so if you don't if you're just making them for yourselves you can find an old shirt in your closet that you're never going to wear again for material you can use bra strap. If you have an old bra hanging around, you can use an old bra for the elastic and that's all you need. But remember, it's only 50% germ protection. But guess what? If it gives you peace of mind, it's worth 800%. So Sweet Angel Gowns is actually making them for doctors and nurses right now, but I've had some personal people I've been making them for too. So you make sure it's all the same side and you lift the flipper, bring it down. Pivot. here 
there. And I always kind of go back and forth. And it's super easy to flip because you have the little handles on the inside that it just pulls right out. So I iron, I iron it and use a squirt bottle of water and I squirt it down and iron it flat and iron the, the, that little crease real easily right there where that hole was. And then pretend like we've ironed and here's one that's ready to be sewn. And this baseball material is kind of thicker and I'm gonna show you what I've done when I've had thicker material. And it's kind of not totally even. So when you have thicker material, you kind of have to hand, gently hand feed it through. So I'm going to start at a corner at one of the tops of the nine inches. Oh, did I already tell you when you have uh, hair ties for the ear pieces, you want to use a 10 inch long because it makes it too short. Oh, and this is seven inches of elastic. But if you have a hair tie, it's 10 inches in length for instead of nine. So you're going to come across, and this is going to be my top. top. And I'm closer than that quarter inch. It's like an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch. I come to the other corner, pivot, and this is the tricky part. You want to make little pleats. And so this is going to be the top, and you make a little half inch pleat. Make a little pleat, fold under, and I do all three at the same time. Fold under, some people uh, pin it, and some people do one at a time, but I like to have them all three in place, and guess what? They're not going to be perfect because we're trying to make a bunch of these, and this one is so not perfect. Wait, let me redo this right here. Fold a little less, fold it down a little more, and there. I'm just going to gently feed it across and keep my fingers out of the way. And look, it gets caught because the material is so thick. Even though I have a heavy duty needle on there. Oh, and if it gets stuck in one spot, I have to lift up a little and move it. And then I go to the next one. Uh-oh. So sometimes your, your thread balls up. I don't know. My mom always told me to get this special thread and I don't have that thread. There's this one thread that doesn't ball up as much as other thread. I think it's a polyester blend. Whoops. So you re-thread. Bring it under. And you hold that. And I'm gonna go back over the darts. And I'm actually going to go over it three times. So this is two, and then three. And you get down to that eighth of an inch or so on the bottom. And you sew across. Okay, my lines are not perfect. It works okay so now on this side you have to remember that this is the bottom so the tuck is going to go the opposite direction you take that pinch it with your fingers bring it down because it's the bottom and down I lost one of my tucks on that I'm gonna to have to go back and sew that up so second and then third tuck I wonder why I lost it it's because I had to make my thread. Oh, well, that didn't get cut on any thick material, did it? You go back over. And then you, you go back over again.
and then you're done. Whoops, and you, you cut off the, the threads because you zigzag back and forth. And now you have a fancy little thing, except I'm gonna redo that one. Let me show you those quick tips I was gonna tell you about. It's just a couple of things I learned doing these masks over this week. And you take a yardstick, can you see this all right? For when you want to, when you have your elastic and you lay it on the yardstick and every seven inches you cut, cause it's kind of awkward to cut elastic. It goes kind of slow. So it goes really fast when you have a yardstick. And you just go like this, seven, 14, 21, 28, oh, it was 35. I was like, okay, what was that other number? 35. Okay, sometimes I use my fingers to count. It's okay. And you have a whole bunch of really quickly. And then for cutting your material, let me get this out of the way. You want to cut on the grain if possible. And you can do like four um, thicknesses at a time. So the salvage, the salvage is this edge that's not gonna fray. And I take the salvage edge. Oh, and the grain, it's really easy to follow the grain when you have a um, plaid but this is what I do for cutting out a whole bunch. I lay it out and I kind of measure, okay, nine, well, this is like 14 inches. And so this one little extra piece, it, I'm gonna do my six and six is 12 and I mark it. And then I, I use just a regular old pen. Let me do that here. So I go six, and 12, and then I go six and 12, and then I'm able to do long lines super easily. Right along the grain, you wanna go with the grain where it's the, the, the threads from the weave. And then, So that's six inches, and then I have to measure nine. So I go, oh gosh, this is too, let me move this. So for nine inches, you do nine, and nine, and then you have this. And I have many layers and I line them up and I just mark them. And sometimes I'm able to get like three in a row and then you have your six by nine squares and it's super easy. All right, good luck, bye-bye, happy sewing.